In this video, I'm going to show the exact process that I use to get work like this from still images using Ditherboy and After Effects. You can swap in After Effects here for another similar animation or video software because I'm going to also give you some resources to help you do this. I'm going to try and keep this as simple as possible. But before we go into the actual process here, if you are new to Ditherboy or if you're not aware what this is, Ditherboy is a fully standalone software developed by Studio AAA for effects like these that I will show you on screen now. What I'm going to cover today is just basically going to be one of 50 possible effects that you can get from the software and obviously we're going to use some other software as well to like support this but um, it's not a plugin or anything so you don't need to use after effects and you don't need to animate to be using ditherboy but yeah if you want to know more about ditherboy i will leave some links below this video so that you can go and learn more and i don't have to spend any more time explaining but to get into it if you want to follow this tutorial on easy mode First thing you should do is open up Ditherboy, go to extras and click on Discord so that you can join here in the Ditherboy Discord. As you can see, I've got to approve people. So there's a few people waiting to get in now and I'll approve them after this video. But in the previews and updates channel, I will often drop in here different assets that I've used, like this animation here and presets. There are going to be two assets that we make in this video to support the creation of work in this style and I will render out the two assets that I create in this video and I will drop them in the previews and updates channel so that you can just download them and you won't really have to follow the whole tutorial but if you want to learn something then you can just follow along anyway. Obviously I've got Ditherboy open here now don't need to do anything in Ditherboy just yet because I'm going to start in After Effects and just so I can show you the actual process for the image that I showed on screen at the start of the video I'm going to go on that image first so I'm going to make a new document in 2160 by 2700 a new composition sorry not a new document I'm just going to 10 seconds and 24 frames per second it doesn't really matter what you go for here but I use this because I post my work on Instagram quite a lot. I'm going to drag in this image to my project tab. This is an image from Unsplash that I used. If you're following along with me in After Effects or in your own animation software that you're using, then obviously you can drag in a couple of images and just build the effect on one and then move it over to your other images later on. Sorry, my After Effects UI is a little bit weird, so I'm just fixing that before we start. But your UI doesn't need to look my, like mine, so don't worry about that. So we've got just one layer here in the 10 second animation. So I'm going to come down to the timeline and just right click and go new adjustment layer. That might be off the screen a little bit for you just because my screen's a bit bigger than the recording, but new adjustment layer. And then if you come to the effects and presets tab, if you don't see that, if you don't see the effects and presets tab, just go to window and make sure effects and presets is ticked. And then in the effects and presets, just type turb, T-U-R-B, and you're going to see turbulent noise here. And we're just going to put that on adjustment layer one and change the blend mode of adjustment layer one to overlay. So if you move the playhead around now, this doesn't do anything just yet because we need to put in some evolution. So holding down alt on your keyboard, that's the left alt key, on Mac, that might be command or option. I think it's probably option. But yeah, holding down Alt, click on the little stopwatch next to evolution and you'll see your timeline will open up where you can write an expression now here. So you don't need to understand writing expressions. We're doing the most simple one there is here, which is just wiggle. So type wiggle, open brackets, followed by two numbers. First number is your frequency of the wiggle and the second number is the amplitude of the wiggle. So frequency means how much, how often, how frequent, and amplitude means like how far basically. So when we're wiggling the evolution here, the frequency is basically the speed of the evolution and the amplitude is how far the evolution will go. So for me, I'm just gonna press one for my frequency and then a comma. So we're separating the numbers and then because this evolution for turbulent noise is on a dial with 360 degrees, I'm going to type 360 for my amplitude. So if I just zoom in a bit so you can see on the recording, 
When I move my playhead around now, you can see that the evolution is sort of just dancing around. And if I press play, you can see that that's how quickly it moves roughly. Sometimes with After Effects, the rate at which things play in the viewport will be a bit slower than they play when you actually export them. So it's probably a little bit quicker than what you're actually seeing here. But yeah, not too worried about that because we can obviously edit it later on. So the way dithering works is highly dependent upon luminosity. Luminosity is just the brightness of a pixel, basically. So by overlaying this turbulent noise and having it evolve using the wiggle expression, we're just making it so the luminosity of each pixel here is not gonna stand still. It's, it's gonna dance around now, basically. So you'll still be able to see the guy's face. You just won't have the still, boring, never changing dither now, basically, because when we put the video in, the dither will be different for this frame to this frame and so on. So anyway, beyond the evolution here in terms of like the complexity and the fractal type, it's really up to you what you want to what you want to choose. Just don't go too far with the brightness like this and don't go like so subtle that you remove any of the effect. But yeah, so just don't go too far either way and you'll be fine, basically. Now, if you want to render this out for later, like I'm going to do, just come back to your timeline here where your layers are, right click and click new solid. And then in color here, just change the B in the HSB to 50 and you'll get 50% gray. Press OK and put that gray solid below your adjustment layer. And if you then export this just without your image there, then you've got the standalone turbulent noise asset basically. Now, just in the interest of not crashing my recording, I'm gonna turn that layer off, but you can leave it on. And I'm just gonna go to new adjustment layer again. And then in my effects and presets tab, I'm gonna just type in snow, and then I'm gonna drag on the CC snowfall to my adjustment layer too. Probably can't notice any difference, first of all. So I'm gonna go to background illumination in the snowfall settings and just turn down the influence to zero. And then just above that, I'm gonna turn the opacity up to 100. Next, I'm gonna turn our flake count all the way down to something very low, but I'm gonna turn the size up. So you can start to see something come through now. Next, if you move your playhead around, you can see the speed is quite fast. I don't want anything this fast for mine. So I'm going to turn the speed all the way down to like 10, basically, just so that it's quite subtle. And I'm also going to turn the variation in speed down. I'm going to open up the wiggle settings and I'm going to change the wiggle amount to zero. And then I'm also going to change the flake flatness to zero as well. All I'm basically doing here is just trying to get it to a point where we've just got these floating like orbs basically coming through our image. So I'm going to turn the flake count down again a little bit. For mine, for the settings that matter here, other than the ones I've read out, I've gone flakes 400, size 12.66, variation size 25, scene depth 5000, speed 10, and then the rest of them I, I read out individually. So you don't necessarily have to copy the settings here. Next, I got that gray solid I made a minute ago. I'm going to make another solid now using the same process, but I'm going to make it black so just fully black solid and holding down shift on my keyboard with the black solid selected put the black solid underneath the snowfall layer by the way but with shift selected i'm just going to click on the black solid click on the snowfall adjustment layer to select them both and then right click and click on pre-compose and now i've got a composition so i can go on and add a glow to that and you can more or less just fine tune your glow until, until you're happy with it. Again, the glow and the, the snowfall and, and stuff here, it doesn't actually matter if you have the exact same settings as me. All I really do to get a nice glow effect is just duplicate the glow. So it's kind of stacking up a little bit like this. And if you can't get a good snowfall with a glow going here, I have actually already put one of these assets in the previews and updates channel just here. So you can just download this one if you want to use my clip. All we need to do from there is just change the snow blend mode to screen. And now we've got the white floating orbs going over our image mixed in with the turbulent noise. So there's quite a lot of movement now in this static image. For my turbulent noise, I'm just going to go back and up this brightness a little bit because I went a little bit far with that. And I was, I'm on dynamic progressive noise, 
but I'm going to change the fractal type to basic just to get it closer to the original here. So I'm about done now applying effects to my image. So if I turn off those layers now, I can just come and drag in other images of other stuff and put them below these effects and it will apply the exact same thing. What I'm going to do though, so I don't lose this recording is I'm just going to stop my recording now. There'll be a cut while I render out this image and maybe a few others with the exact same effects. And then when I come back, I will have the actual files ready to put into Ditherboy. In terms of my render settings, I'm just going to use the match bitrate setting in Adobe Media Encoder. And to render, I always go to composition, add to media, encoder Q. And I'm going to have to censor stuff here because I've got lots of weird names and stuff for my files. But the I'm no expert in rendering, but the secret to good renders for me, luckily, because I have an NVIDIA graphics card, is just making sure you turn on the CUDA or CUDA. I don't know. I've never had to say that out loud. But yeah, just turn on GPU acceleration of some kind if you've got it whenever you're rendering. But yeah, I'll cut back now in a second when I've done this. Okay, so mine I have finally done exporting and I exported those assets that I'm going to put in the Discord as well. So I'm now in Ditherboy. I'm in version 3.0.2. You might be in a later version because we nearly have a later version done. But right now you go to file, video and import video. And here I've got all of mine. So I'm going to start with the face that I showed you earlier and just click open. It's going to decompile your video into individual frames and it's going to show you the first frame with some content in it. So for me, this is frame one. Now we already know what this looks like, the evolution of the turbulent noise and the falling snowfall orbs. We've already done all that. Let me just make Ditherboy a little bit bigger, actually. I always forget that we added it in so you can resize it now. But anyway, so just to zoom in so I can see what kind of dither I'm gonna make. My own personal favorite dithering algorithms ever, the Bayer dithering algorithms. So we've got Bayer ordered, Bayer void, which is only in Ditherboy, actually, Bayer void. But either way, for this image, you are going to need to lower the the brightness basically you can do that with the highlights midtones and contrast or just by upping the luminance threshold so i'm going to do that now i'm just going to start tweaking stuff i'm going to zoom back in so you can see what i'm actually doing so yeah basically upping the luminance threshold kind of just fixes it anyway and then from there we just want to pick an appropriate scale so i'm going to go for seven scale for this one and i've also saved the preset for this exactly the settings again i'll drop that in the discord if you want to download it but to export then we're going to go file video and export video and it'll just put your frames back together obviously this might be a little bit longer than whatever however long it took you to export from adobe media encoder because adobe is a multi-million dollar company and we are not but once it's done you can just add another dither effect if you want to keep going through on the same clip. I'm just going to import the next one, which was a hand, just a stock photo of a hand that I did. And for this one, I think I'm going to try out, I'm going to go for the Atkinson line modulation style, which is just in the glitch category down here at the bottom. And you don't have to copy my settings, but I'm going to turn up the horizontal bias a little bit and I'm going to keep the scale quite low, but that's about it. And then same as last time, file, video, export. I'll just cut to the next clip for you. So my last one, I just did a skeleton and I cropped it to be just the ribs. Let me see what I'm going to do for this one. I'm going to try it a different category or just a different type of effect. I think I'm going to go for smooth diffuse, just with a little bit of lowered contrast, a little bit higher on the luminance threshold. And I might try just a little bit of blur as well. Kind of like that. I'll just zoom in if you can't see that. Yeah, this is like, this is my favorite, favorite style in the entire software i think smooth diffuse but i say that about all of them so anyway i'm going to export this one and then we're going to move back into after effects just to finish it off and just so you know all three of those i exported the preset and i'll also put that in the discord as well if you want to get my exact exact settings okay so coming back into after effects now i'm in the same project as before but i'm going to come to the project tab on the left if you don't see the project tab, just go to window and make sure project is ticked. It's down here. So right click and go new composition, 2160 by 2700, all the same settings as before. And then wherever you rendered your dithered videos out to, just go and grab those and drag them into the project tab. 
will take a second to import and then you can just drag them into your new composition onto the timeline. And so in comp two now, you've got your exported dithers. In comp one, you've got all the setup that you need. So if you wanted to like compare what you put in versus what you got out, like you can do that pretty easily. All that remains here is a new adjustment layer with a glow. And again, it's just a case of layering it. So it's always good to turn the glow threshold down to zero because we're only working in black and white anyway. And obviously black pixels can't glow. So don't need to worry about threshold. When you're layering, it's good to, if you are gonna do a layer of glow that is high radius, it's good to keep the intensity closer to one. But if you are going to do a high intensity, so if you up that to like 1.4, it's better to keep it like quite dense or like low radius basically. And then in After Effects, when you have the actual effect selected, you can just go Control D to duplicate it. And then on the next one, you can obviously up the threshold, lower the intensity and the radius. And if you change your glow colors to A and B colors, and then come and do like a red and an orange. You can get like a little tint going. Um, I've probably put the colors on the wrong one here. So let me just swap that to this bottom glow layer. And if I zoom in a bit, you can get a better idea of what I'm doing. But yeah, it's really just like, just layer up the glow as much as you want. So get it to where you want in terms of glow. I'm not gonna play this here because again, I don't wanna crush my recording, but I will show you on screen the export I get from this. And then obviously you can just hide that first dither if you did multiple dithers and then just go and sort of reconfigure the glow for your second image and third one and so on. I will do all of that post recording so that you can see exactly what I got out of everything. This rib cage one looks particularly cool. So I'll probably spend a little bit more time creating the effect on this one, but it is literally just going to be some variation of glow and colors and changing the threshold and that kind of thing. So if you watched all the way through this video, I'm going to guess you have Dither Boy. So thank you for the support. Whatever you made from this tutorial, I would love to see it. So please send it in the Discord or post it and tag me. I love seeing this stuff. Obviously, more updates in the works for Dither Boy, more tutorials and stuff coming. If there's anything in particular you would like to see added to the software or done in a tutorial, please let me know in the Discord. That's the best place to like put feedback, basically. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. I'll show all the results I got on screen while I'm talking at this end bit, and I will see you in the next video. And actually, just as the last reminder, everything is in the Discord. I'll go put that in right now. So if you want to get the shortcut way, just check the Discord. But yeah, cool. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.